Well, Werewolf by Night was not scary in the least, but you know what is scary? Being the only dude on YouTube who has a negative opinion about a Marvel property. But here we are. Thanks a lot, those of you who reviewed this at Fantastic Fest. You were the first to see this thing, and boy, did you hype it up. And I got lost in that hype sauce. I thought this was going to be something truly special, a way to kind of inundate your kids with horror, a way to bring them into the genre, kind of like I had in my childhood with Silver Bullet, a werewolf film that I still hold near and dear to my heart. But that's not really what I had. That was not my experience. You said this was going to be a dare for Marvel. That this was going to be unlike anything they've ever done. And it was going to have more gore than we've ever seen. And maybe even rub some people the wrong way. While still being a nice callback to the Universal Monster movies. And giving you an amazing werewolf transformation. I guess we didn't watch the same thing. So here, these are the five reasons that I just could not get on board with Werewolf by Night. My first problem was just the plot. The fact that it was so exposition heavy and it took so long to get going. And it seemed promising out of the gate. I saw the title cards. I saw that glorious black and white. And I was like, oh, we're going to get those Universal Monster vibes. This is going to be fun. But it sounds like we're having a high octane thrill ride because you're kind of giving me this video game-esque plot. All this stuff about there can only be one victor and one monster hunter will become the new leader of this underworld monster hunting society. And that we're going to go out into this kind of labyrinthian maze out in the garden where all sorts of hidden weapons have been placed and there's a monster that has been weakened but is angry and knows its back is up against the wall. That sounds like things are going to get vicious and visceral and fun and like I said just high octane tons of momentum but man it was not that. This was a slog and this is called Werewolf by Night but you know, it's only 50 minutes and so we don't even see anything remotely werewolf until like the 37 minute mark. And speaking of that werewolf, I alluded to all of the praise that was heaped on to this special for its werewolf transformation. And I have to say, I was let down. The word of mouth maybe didn't do this thing any favor because I heard that and I was like, oh, you know what? Marvel? Disney? Disney Plus? That's, that's right. There's more money than God. So they can really do something special. Think about what was done with werewolf transformations in the 80s. If you want to do a werewolf special, then you have to have an amazing werewolf transformation. And if you have all the resources and creative know-how in the world, you should be able to do something spectacular. But instead, we just kind of did some nice trick with lighting and the strobe effect. And you saw the shadow kind of change slowly. And it's nice. It wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong. But it's just odd that we put our transformation at the forefront of the original Wolfman movie. And that was almost like a hundred years ago at this point. So I just kind of expected more from this monopoly that has its tentacles and everything. And like I said, more money than God. So maybe, you know, go for the fences, take a home run swing and show me this man turn into a werewolf by night. Point number three is the actual appearance of said werewolf once the transformation was complete. And again, not bad, not too shabby, but also just solid, not spectacular. Up close, and we had real tight shots, and you had the facial features. You're like, okay, I kind of like what we're doing here. It's a little anamorphic, but also a little bit like a canine. It works for me. It does. But then in your wide shots with the combat and such, and this werewolf is flying around and hopping off of walls, looked a little bit more ape-like. This seemed very reminiscent of Planet of the Apes to me. It just looked like a man in a kind of ape primate suit, almost like I was watching Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, but like it was all jacked up on steroids and watching the raid too many times. Just really wasn't a very memorable werewolf transformation. And then final product, which is kind of surprising. I'm not saying the thing had to be gnarly and terrifying and spit dripping off of fangs and just bloodshot eyes and any of that, anything that would scare the little ones. But we could have done more than this, right? We could have done more than Caesar with some dog DNA and another elements of all things werewolves. I just felt like this was lacking is that historically werewolves have been used to symbolize or represent things like puberty, sexual deviancy, alcoholism, aggression, all sorts of different things. There's, it's just such a thematically rich creature and you can just kind of probe deep and explore so much about real world horrors. And you are Disney and you are so great about championing those who society looks at as the other or does not give any sort of love and time to. 
perceives them to be a monster. So it just seems like a misfire because we could have had a complete marriage here of a concept and a studio. Just seems like they should mingle. This is what you guys do all the time. So much so that some people on the internet get mad and call you out for social justice stuff and, and just kind of going for clout and doing like gender swaps, race swaps, all the stuff, stuff that doesn't offend me, but other people do. So I kind of look to you to do something fun with this werewolf because they always have, as long as werewolf stuff existed, we have done this. And yet we didn't do it here. It's kind of surprising. And my last point for all the talk about how this was really stepping out of line and doing something bold and different, really getting out of that Marvel box, it wasn't. All the old underpinnings were there. The same old tricks were there and they were so patently obvious. We talked about the gore. There was no gore. There was no viscera. There was a few little bits of like digital blood splatter, but you know, you blink and you miss it. There was one nice moment of dismemberment. I will give them that, but this is nothing that is going to abscond your senses and ruin your sensibilities and just make parents irate. No, your kids will sleep well at night. This is nothing too heavy, especially in 2022. And the comedy didn't land for me. They go for a few jokes here and there, but by comedy, all we're really talking about is puns and dad jokes and even the combat, the action. I love that they had that once we finally got going and got past all the God freaking exposition, but it was such Marvel choreography. I mean, right off the bat, the very first bit of action violence that we get to see is a character named Elsa going for a very, very Black Widow-esque scissor kick thrust throw maneuver that we've seen a thousand times by every female Marvel hero since the MCU really got up and running. So a lot of this felt old hat. It felt safe. It didn't feel like universal monsters. It didn't feel like it had suspense. It didn't feel like it explored anything. It didn't feel like much of anything. It was a special that did not feel that special. And that is unfortunate. So this is probably not something I will ever revisit. It was eh. It was all right. It was okay. It wasn't awful, but it wasn't awesome. And it's not something I'm going to go back and watch every October like I was told I would by so many Fantastic Fest reviewers. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on it. I hope I didn't poo-poo this too much if you were a big time proponent of this little feature. But it just it wasn't what I was hoping for and it just isn't what I want. I'm so starved for good werewolf entertainment. Can we get that going, please? But this wasn't it, at least not for this guy. If it was for you, let me know down in the comments section. Be sure to hit like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff because October is really going and there's going to be a ton of content coming your way. And as always, I just got to ask you to have yourself a good day. I'm Nate for Nate Merflix saying that's a wrap.